It's good to have you join us again. Now to the next line of our discussion coming up now. The Governing All Progressives Congress has formally named the Governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, as the Director General of the Bola Tinubu Presidential Campaign Organization. Chairman of the party, Senator Abdullah Adamu, announced this to newsmen last week after meeting with President Muhammadu Buhari at the State House in Abuja. Senator Adamu explained that the choice of Mr. Lalong was based on his ability to do the work required as well as to ensure victory for the Tinubu Shetima ticket in next year's presidential election. Reactions have since uh, begun to trail the choice of Governor Lalong as the party's choice for campaign DG, with some Nigerians saying it was a feeble attempt at appeasing Christians from the North and Nigeria in general. But in his reaction, Governor Lalong says his appointment isn't about religion, neither is it an attempt to ridicule Christians or the North Central uh, Zone. He rejected calls from some quarters for him to reject the appointment. And now, Governor Simon Lalong joins us uh, via Zoom. Good morning, Your Excellency, and welcome to TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you very much. All right. It's good to have you join us indeed. So you're, you're coming in now as the DG of the APC's presidential campaign body. What value, how will you quantify the value you're bringing in uh, to the party's bid to win in the forthcoming presidential election? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me thank God and thank uh, uh, my party for recognizing me with this responsibility. And also, I must also thank my colleagues, the progressive governors, for even making that recommendation, because it was, first of all, a recommendation by the progressive governors for after the election and after the selection of the vice presidential candidate. Vice presidential candidate. Now, people think that I came there on the platter of religion. I was, I, I wasn't first nominated on the platter of religion. These progressive governors sat down together. Of course, you should also know that at the time that it was really very, very, there was this strong sentiment that the presidency should not move to the South. It was Northern governors. I am the chairman of the Northern governors. I led a team to see the president. We made presentation to Mr. President. Mr. President look at, looked at it objectively. It was not on the issue of basis. It was not on the basis of religion. And after that, how many candidates were presented? I am sure, apart from uh, Ashwaju, Bola Tinubu, apart from Lawan, the rest were all Christians. The rest were all Christians, I must say this. Now, there were also so many delegates that were Christians so many, also, so many delegates that were Muslims. First, we were thinking about the unity of this country. And I came out and I said, I always emphasize unity, fairness, and equity. We look at it objectively. And Mr. President agreed with us that this thing moves to the South. But by the time we were voting, we had a choice. People had a choice. I had a, we had a choice. It wasn't because, for me, I was not in the team of Bola uh, Asiwaju. I was not in his team. And even when he emerged, I came back and said, sir, you know I was not in your team. But you won the election. And as a party man, anywhere you go, I will support you. You must win this election. That was the meeting we had with him immediately when he said, he said I, I will bring Northern governors to him. I said, you won. Because our belief was that this thing be moved to the south. That any candidate that will emerge from the south will support him. No condition. Unconditionally support him. Immediately, he was announced, immediately he won the election. To be fair to him, it was, which was later something that he later disclosed to us. Because all of us were quarreling with him. After he won the election, sir, he did not come back again to console governors. We realized that he consulted some. Some ran there 
without informing others. Well, those things were, were resolved. And he said, made a presentation to him that this, uh, the, the choice of the vice presidential candidate should go to the Northeast or Northwest. Remember, when we were talking about going to the South and North, it was not about Northeast or Northwest. But at the end of the day, we realized that if there was this thing, it is political, what I call political maneuvering. But the second aspect is that those people that were in his camp, led by his, uh, I, I will call, tactician, uh, Baba Shirlawa, he said he invited him and said, okay, also go and make a proposal for me as to where my mind will go for the choice of a vice presidential candidate. Again, I want to put it on record. Baba Chiri is a Christian. The proposal to him was that he should go to the Northeast and Northwest. I want you to understand this perspective. Governor Samal Along is from the, from the North Central. From the North Central. At this moment that I'm talking, even the, the composition of those that have been championing the issue of, of minority Christians, or minorities even in Nigeria, are all headquartered in Josh. All of them are in Jos. And within 2015 to date, nobody has done that assignment better than myself and, and the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, was Mustafa. Now, if you ask the question, was it all about Christianity? I didn't know. Because even when the agitations were going, personally, I did not contest. The vice pre Office of Vice President's uh, slot for candidate is not something that people will contest for. I did not have the fire. If I wanted to go for that, I would not have gone to contest for Senate. I have a central ticket at hand. Mm. But my own was to ensure that there was fairness and equity. Again, my Christian brothers were the one who made presentation that if it goes to the north, you must exclude a part of the north. That is not central. If you remove that central for minority Christian interests, I doubt if you will have any stronghold. Because all of them are here. This is the center where they come to meet. But when it came to that, it means that something was wrong. Something was wrong somewhere. So on that issue, I tell you that uh, Shetima Imaj. Shetima, let me tell you today, and I said, at the proper time, I'll be telling Nigerians the truth. Tetima was one, is my immediate predecessor at the time, at the governor's, at the Northern Governor's Forum. It was Tetima when he was, uh, when his tenure was about to expire, that went to all the Northern Governors and told them that he will think that the best thing that he can do is if he hands over to the Plateau State Government. I didn't know about that. He went around and lobbied. And so at the time we got to Kaduna, I couldn't have contested because I thought I was a minority. But in the night of that election, Satima called all of them and said, I was there. He said, look, for fairness, look to consider also the plight of the minorities. I think this thing should go to the governor of Plateau on a post for his ability in uniting both Christians and Muslims in his state, what he has done so far. And all of them unanimously accepted and endorsed me as the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. In the Northern Governors Forum, we are 19, but only three of us are Christians. He did that to me. I will not forget that. And after that, not only did that, but he encouraged me a lot. Anything that has to do with the Northern Governors Forum, he was always available to give me the cooperation, to, to give me the cooperation. I said this because when they say, how are you going to sell? Who sell what? We are all Christians, we all have our, our ambitions. I am a Catholic. I hold a papal award, the Knight of St. Gregory the Great. I was brought up by Catholic Church. I was brought up by missionaries from primary school. 
many people knew that. I was taught by Reverend Fathers and Reverend Sisters. Some of us were privileged to attend missionary schools. So nobody can tell me I belong to that faith. But what I was quarreling with, why didn't they ask them? If you are talking about North South, why did you confess to show that kind of segregation? To say that the North Central should not be considered. Why? Because the only governor that was a Christian is from Plateau State. It's from the North Central. Now, at the end of the day, perhaps, because none of them were selected as the, the, the vice presidential uh, candidate, it became it now became a completely whole Christian affair. To death, as I'm talking, nobody has invited me. I am not sure they invited Boss Mustafa. For seven years, we've been championing this thing. Before that, when uh, we were forming APC, I remember that in uh, Senator George Akume's house was where we put ourselves together. And Babashir was chairman, I was secretary. What was it for? To propagate the interests of the minorities, which is usual. We went around and we said, look, consider us to work after election. So that you look at our plight. It was on the basis of that that consideration was given. And the party ESCO was expanded to include Christians here and there. After that, we won the election. And I'm sure that it was part of it that Babashir was made secretary to the government as a minority. We went for his Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving, and he told us that we should not come back again, that he was given this ticket by his friend, as well as to the book. Some of us said, no, all we are trying to say is that we want to know that you are given. Yes, we also argue that you are a minority, so that we can go and say thank you to Aswaju Bola Tindu for aiding your appointment. All right, you, Your well, Excellency, let's, uh, <clears throat> so, so that we can utilize this time to touch on several areas that, that uh, a lot of Nigerians have been talking about. Now, okay. the APC, your political party, has gone ahead already. There's no going back from what uh, some of your chieftains have said. How will this Muslim Muslim ticket demystify that, that sentiment among Nigerians where it, it looks like when it comes to issue of religion, we may never come together and all of that? How will this opportunity demystify all of that sentiment that is in the air regarding all the discussions in politics and all of, and so on? Well, I've told you something. The vice presidential position is not the only position that, we, that people are aspiring for in the, the, in the party. You can see that, yes, the presidential candidate in March, he has appointed, his, uh, which was also endorsed by the party, the vice presidential candidate. Now, when it came to director general, they said, no, I should not. There are so many positions first. And we have not even reached the level of uh, sharing of offices or zoning of offices at the National Assembly or when you, we finish appointments after election. It is politics and consultations are going, are still going. Apart from that, are we saying that we have no uh, developments in our states? We have not done anything in our states as, per, as APC. We have not done anything in this country. Politics involves a lot of issues. We are also uh, assembling all those issues that are necessary for campaigns. So for us, at the end of, uh, when we start our campaign, we're going to be talking about campaign of issues. Campaign on issues, campaigns of blackmail, or campaigns of uh, calumny. Under my uh, stewardship as a director general, I will not want to encourage those ones, but I will want to concentrate on campaign of issues, a campaign about uh, issues. I'll be talking about campaign about justice, equity, and fairness, just like I talk about. We'll be talking about peace. In some places, we are going to bring out issues that we have done in this government, issues that our president has done. We are also going to be talking about places where he has intervened, a lot of intervention that is done to ensure that there is peace and progress. 
and progress in Nigeria. It's not only religious issues. Yes, religious issues will also come in in some of those places. And don't forget, it is a team. It's going to be a teamwork. As a director general, this is not the first assignment I've, I've, I've had. It. I was given a responsibility to go and deliver a candidate. Rotimia Kiridun in Ondo, under a very, very strong uh, sitting governor. A sitting governor. I got there, it was impossible. People believe it was impossible in a southwest. And I led that team, that campaign, and delivered Rotimia Kiridun out of the clothes of a sitting governor. Myself, personally, I contested election with a sitting governor, sitting governor, that time powerful sitting governor under PDP. I defeated him. I became a governor. When religion sentiments were coming up, when it was very heavy on platform, that the APC was a, was a Muslim party, I won that election for women. I came back again under such circumstances and I won the election. So it's not something that is new to me. And like I said, my Christian brothers are aware of some of these interventions. So politics is about legitimate way of addressing your interests, of, 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 of setting up your interests, so that at the end of the day, your interest is also taken care in all scheme of things. So it's not only religion. Don't put it that we're only going to be talking about religion. No, it has gone, like you said. We have a chairman, we have a presidential candidate that is a Christian, married to a, my, my, that is a Muslim, married to a Christian, married to a Christian. We have a, 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 a vice presidential candidate that is also, I would say, partly for me, a minority like me, a minority. But he's a Muslim, he's a Muslim from Borno, from Borno. Today, I'm still the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. My being chairman of the Northern Governors Forum is not ordinary. It's to also look at some of the problems here and there of the minorities, some of the Christians, and see ways of addressing those issues. Why? We have grievances, we have uh, problems after the election, but we've also developed, and we're doing, already doing that, to develop ways. We have been meeting with our religious leaders. We are meeting with them and explaining the truth so that we don't mix up personal problems with, uh, with the general problems about Christianity. About, uh, Christianity. Mm. All right. Um, there was this uh, meeting held recently by Baba Chirilawal and uh, Dugara, and they called themselves uh, APC. Northern Christians, uh, what is your response to that uh, meeting? Because uh, Pastor Keyamo uh, came out and said there was no such uh, organization within the party. Well, first of all, we don't recognize that within the party. And two, the fact that they are not, I, I've, I told you that for a very long time, for about six years, 2015 to death, we have been the one, usually we started with Baba Shet about, we call it Christian in government, minority Christians in government. But when he left as a SGF, uh, was Mustafa took over. We, had, we, had, we used to have several meetings, either in Jos or Abuja. It's usually in Jos or in Abuja, in Abuja, to look at the plight of minority Christians in the North. That is the only one that I know as an association. Now, this one that is formed after, because as a result of the election of the primaries of uh, APC, that one I don't know, and I was not invited. You can imagine a meeting like that to say that governor, the only governor, sitting governor is not invited. The secretary of the government is not invited. Ministers in the, at the, uh, in the North, Audrogwe is not invited. He's the chairman of the Arewa Consultative Forum. Senator Akume was not invited. So many people were not invited. That is not a, a meeting that will meet up with the conclusion about Christian minorities. So we're all not invited. 
The only thing I came to know was when Babatir came uh, on television to say that there was a meeting. And that meeting made recommendation to Asuwazu, to our candidate, His Excellency Asuwazu Bola Tinubu, for presidential candidate, for, 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 uh, for direction to pick presidential candidate. I asked the question, if you are picking a presidential candidate from the North, why did you exclude North Central Zone? Who gave you that kind of right? Where is the headquarter of the Christian minority agitation? It's in the North Central. It's in the North Central. So if we argue and say it means that it was a selective thing, that uh, somebody wanted his interest uh, and then suddenly realized that he couldn't make, make his interest. Uh, it, it was not realized. And then turned out to form that kind of association. I was not, a, I've never been invited to a meeting like that. And all of us were not members. I can name all the key people in government in, in, in the North Central. And I can also name most people in the North who are not members, who are not also aware of that decision. All right. Let's also, you know, look at what the future holds for the APC. Some have even gone as far as saying that there are cracks in about 20 states in the APC and are wondering how the party, the governing party, would resolve discontent here and there. We've even seen some people leaving the party, some uh, top personalities leaving the party following the emergence of the uh, Tinubu Shetima ticket. So, so that, how does that fit into uh, your scheme of events or duties right now? Uh, very well. It, uh, it fits into my scheme of duties. But don't forget, Abdullah Ademu was the chairman of reconciliation committee before the election, before the primaries. Abdullah Ademu went round, Senator so Abdullah Ademu went round in 36 states. He did that very well. And I think part of what made him to be recommended to be appointed the, chair, the national chairman was part of that aspect. That he was familiar with already some of these conflicts in all the states. And so it would make it easy for, easier for him to come and sit down and resolve some of those issues. So I see one, the advantage in Abdullah, uh, Senator Abdullah Yatemu being the national chairman. At one of the meetings too, you understand the former national chairman, uh, national uh, interim chairman, uh, Baba Bisha Kande was also uh, the chairman of one of the reconciliation committees. And it was, it was uh, his deputy was Kashim, Governor, uh, Senator Kashim, the present candidate, uh, President uh, Kashim, the, the, the vice presidential candidate now, who was also who midwife the reconciliation at that time. So for us, we are still going to continue. It's like a continuation of where Senator Abdullah at the moment left. We have conflict, yes, just like other parties. It is, when you, start, you come to a political party with conflict of interest, definitely you expect that it is not going to be uh, business as usual. People are going to start introducing conflict. And, uh, people are going to believe that but every decision that is taken, it may not favor them. But there are also mechanisms for settling those conflicts. And those mechanisms are already available in the party. And that is what we are also doing by the time we unveil our campaign council. You will see what we will do. You will see who will head uh, uh, the reconciliation committee. And, and also, in respect of that, our presidential candidate is a political tactician. I call him a politica, political tactician always. He knows it. I said he's a political tactician. He knows when to resolve conflict. And at any time, he's always talking about efforts to resolve conflict than moving into litigation, than moving into the litigation. So I want to tell you, you were aware of that. There is already a prepared department. So we're just waiting to unveil it. And by the time we unveil it, you will see who is there. You will see what efforts are done. And we know that at the end of the day, we'll move into this election as one political party.
All right, uh, uh, Mr. Governor, I, I know that uh, you have been on the drawing board trying to map out and draw all of the metrics around uh, how you want to approach the campaigns and so on. But in your assessment, understanding Nigeria very well and the political character of everyone, I wonder which part of the country, based on geopolitical zones or states, that you would like to pay critical attention to uh, based on the dynamics right now? Well, uh, like I said, in those states, every state, we have governors. We have both Muslims and we have Christians. We are not going to say that we are going to pay on attention to only a few states. All the states are very, very important to us. You know, but is not something you imagine that uh, because you see people coming overwhelmingly to shout your name at the end of the day, that is going to dictate the result of the election. No, we are not taking anything for granted. Everything that we have, we are going to deploy all our resources, also deploy all our energy, and deploy all our, our, our techniques in winning this election. So we are not saying that some regions are important while some are not important. Of course, we have two, uh, I would say, two prominent candidates that are Muslims. We have one that is a Christian. Does not mean we will leave any other part. We are moving, we know what we are prepared already. We are moving into the Southeast. We are already com getting comfortable with the South, South, South. The North Central is already for grab for APC. Don't to talk less of the Northeast and also the Northwest. So, um, going back to the issue of uh, Baba Che Lawa and all of that, some people say that uh, when they held that meeting, it was all sour grapes because they didn't get the, uh, Dugara didn't get the vice presidential slot and Baba Che wanted it for, wanted it for himself. Um, uh, Magnus Abe came here uh, on this show and spoke about how um, Baba Chir, Baba Chir himself wanted to manipulate the list that was handed over to the presidential flag bearer. Do you see this as uh, sour grapes that uh, they didn't get the, the position of vice president and they're even more angry with you now because um, if they had kept quiet, they probably would have gone for the position of DG of the presidential campaign? Well, uh, uh, I don't want to be talking about personalities at this level. I don't want to be talking about personalities. We are talking about interests of people. I'd already told you that the interest, even if you talk about Christian minorities, northern minorities in the party, I am always seen as number one. I'm not bragging about myself because any consultations that will come, I will be there. It is when we look at the overview and we make the vice president always as our leader. So it's either the vice president when it concerns the entire Christian's interest in the party, or when you go back to the north, I am always the one that is being consulted. I am always the one that is being consulted. Consulted. So for me, there was no meeting. I would say there was no meeting. What I only knew was that. The president, uh, the candidate asked for recommendation. And this recommendation were made, which was also confirmed by Baba Chir, by, confirmed by Baba Chir, that they made recommendations to him. And like I said, I asked the question, if you were even going to make recommendation, even if you don't like me, of course, I never went to campaign for vice president because a lot of people are writing, yes. But even if you are going to do that, it should be under a leadership. It should be under a leadership. That you did it and you didn't get will become a different matter. That will become a different matter. People will not believe that because you lost out. That's why you are crying. Why didn't you involve everybody? So that is the aspect I see. And as far as I'm concerned, I said this because, yes, I was not in that team. But when he emerged as a candidate, I promised him that I don't do anti-party. I don't do at the party. I am going to work for you as you will work there 
We will win the election. We will win the, by the grace of God, we will do the, uh, we will go and win the, win the election. That time I was not campaigning for DG because first again, I was not in their camp. I was not campaigning for DG, but out of respect, in fact, several times he was inviting me and we were discussing, and I was giving him objective things about Northern, Northern uh, Governors Forum, which I was the chairman. I was also giving him objective things that he would do with reference to also the concern. Let me emphasize that concern of the Northern interest and Northern minority interest. I emphasize it. I told him, I said, don't look at the messenger, but look at the message. Because politics is about interest. It's a uh, aggregation of interest. The interest of the minorities also is, should also be looked at. I told him that. I told him. Right. During a post-mortem of, you know, what happened uh, before, during and after the primaries, it, it's indeed, um, you know, very attractive, but we, we're mindful of the time at this point now, uh, Your Excellency. So let's, let's look at, you know, some of the recent developments that we have seen emerging. Uh, the Buhari administration has received several knocks and this time around, coming from the National Assembly, though it's from a minority wing of the lawmakers at the Senate, but now they're talking about impeaching uh, President Buhari on account of the worsening level of insecurity across the country and in the federal capital territory. What's your response to that, especially how it could impact on the APC's chances now? Uh, well, we're aware of those concerns. And uh, it's not only expressed by the senators, but also even at progressive level and, not, and, and the governor's forum about the insecurity in the nation. But this is not, I must say, peculiar to Nigeria. It is everywhere like you are seeing today. So the thing that definitely this one affects us directly and there must be concern about it. But I don't think that talking about taking to the level of impeachment it will even get to impeachment because I know uh, uh, there are ways of uh, registering such concerns. And uh, every time we have a meeting, there is also attention that is drawn to some of those things. I, we attend, we are members of the, uh, the Security Council. Each time there was a meeting, we are always there, we raise this concern. But when you added the issue of impeachment, <laughs> as a former speaker, I know it's not, a, it's not an easy thing. It's a last resort always. And that kind of last resort is always very, very difficult. Let us put, put together and remind Mr. President that security is very important. We are very concerned about it in our various states. And we are working. And it's not that the federal government is also not doing their efforts. We appreciate some of the efforts that are done. But we say that we must continue to improve on that. We've developed a directorate already, which we are working on. Because each time I'm making an interview, they ask me, I should bring everything. I say, our politics in politics, there are things you also reserve, and things you also tell the public, tell the public that we're doing. We want to improve on what Mr. President has done. And that is the mandate that we're giving to sell to the public, which we are going to start bringing out very soon. All right, Your Excellency, your role as DG of the Campaign Council of a presidential candidate is quite enormous. And by the time campaign starts, you're going to be all over the country every day, every month until the elections are over. You are a sitting governor and uh, you also have a senatorial elections to run. A lot of people feel that uh, this is going to take you away from your primary assignment, which is your of being a governor of a state. How, how do you intend to handle all of this? Because uh, uh, these, these three things or three assignments are quite enormous on one person. Well, thank you very much. That was what was said when I was elected the chairman of Northern Governors Forum. They said that uh, before we came back, as we were coming back, they said this will affect your uh, election, this will affect this and that. We won the election, clearly, even with Northern Governors Forum. All, most of the elections in my state were always winning. It, uh, in spite of my attention at the Governors Forum, 
my attention at the Northern Governors Forum and this one. Don't forget the senatorial candidate uh, ticket. My people believed in me and reposed the confidence in me on a post. There was no, there was no rival. So I was on a post. That is to say, that is the basis for even acceptance in my constituency. The same thing when we had uh, the primaries. Yes, there were pockets of, uh, of protests here and there, which is usual in every state after primaries. But as far as I'm concerned, and as far as Plateau people are concerned, if you come to Plateau to do assessment, they will tell you the candidate is the best of all, of all the candidates that we selected. Secondly, when we came to the uh, issue of, uh, of uh, the deputy, we did a balance. So for me, I'm very, very comfort comfortable that at, up to this moment, very overwhelming support for APC. Uh, APC. So that has also reduced the pressure on me as we move in to take the national assignment. For me, it's not a problem. I know Plato very well. Plato also know me very well. So I, it's not anything that will take my attention away and also the distance. Now, finally, that also as a DG, I am not a DG in isolation. I know those people that are with me, that are going to work with me. I know the capacity of the national chairman. I know that the president is going to be the chairman of the campaign council. I know the efforts of Mr. President. I know the governors that, were, that are surrounding me and even the, the ministers and everybody. Many of them are, are those I will call uh, very, very experienced politicians. So with that kind of gathering, by the time I put them together, in fact, coordinating the entire campaign will not be a problem problem for me because they are going to be the field soldiers while I'm I will sit down and coordinate the the position of the candidate himself and the vice presidential candidate are things that there are already people that are known in Nigeria and outside outside the country and outside the country so that makes things better for me to even accept to go for Senate to accept to oversee the gubernatorial campaign in my state and also be ahead the presidential election. Yeah, um, it's good to find out from you how you are going to navigate um, pushing the candidacy of Ashura uh, uh, Ahmed Tunubu as separate from that of President Muhammad Buhari, since there are two different personalities, two different visions, uh, two different uh, tendencies, even though they belong to the same party. I think all of them are all of them are experienced politicians. All of them are experienced politicians. At the level of the West and the level of the South, uh, Aswaju Bola Tinubu has always been in charge. When President Wari uh, uh, came out and met with Aswaju, you can see the wonderful com uh, combination. We won the election two times. Now imagine a situation where you have President Wari on one side, and then the, the, the experience and the techniques, political uh, techniques, or what people call political sagacity of, of uh, Aswaju Bola Tinubu mix up. And then you have Kashim coming on the other side. And some of the governors, who at the end of the day, you know, are coordinating the zones. You will wonder who else, what else would be better than the structure of the APC. That's why I said in APC, the party is well structured, not only for the campaign, but generally in administration. So. This is what we are going to expect, uh, expect from, uh, from the two combinations. It is not separated. It is a continuation of what we already have in winning the election. We won two times, and that is what we are going to do with some added changes.
Right, but as an answer to, you know, growing inquiry as to what the APC is offering Nigerians now through the Tinobu Shetima ticket, especially uh, when you look at the economic challenges presently before us, uh, crippling debt profile, uh, fuel scarcity, and of course the bigger picture of, you know, Nigeria, why Nigeria should be in the position it is looking at the oil crisis and, you know, several other, you know, realities before us. What is the uh, Tinubu Shetima ticket offering Nigerians now? Well, Tinubu is already well known in Lagos. You can take the example of Tinubu, of take the example of what wonderful thing he did in, in Lagos. Impossibilities, I will say, from nothing where Lagos is. He's going to be the president of Nigeria. You don't expect less of what he has that will contribute towards uh, uh, towards changing some of the some of the, some of the challenges you are talking you are talking about. His vice president, vice presidential nominee, my candidate, Chetima, was elected, and you know why Borno was. At the end of the day, if you look at Borno today. Far better than where Borno, where Borno was. In terms of the economics of the state, in fact, for long, we also have a research team. And that research team is working with the, the, the structure that we have already in government to look at those issues and also to provide solutions to them. By the time they are concluded, they, 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 they conclude their activities. We are not saying, I, 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 I earlier told you, and we're going to be talking about issues. We're going to be talking about issues. If I guarantee you that you will see some of the issues that will convince people that there's going to be, to, to be some changes that will also add improvement, because I don't want to say there has, has not been any development or progress in this government. There has been a lot of progress. But what we're going to do is to find ways of improving on what we have to address some of the new challenges that we have. Director General of the APC Presidential Campaign Organization and Governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, we thank you very much for speaking with us on TBC Breakfast. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are always, we are always welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Yep.